In this video, we're going to take a look at the BCI or Beyond Soft Custom Visual in Power BI. It's an ideal visual for calendar, month by month visualization of your data. We're going to have two use cases and we're going to explore the custom, uh, custom visual and have a look at all the things that you can change and tweak inside the visualization itself. If you like this kinds of videos, I do more of them. There is a playlist even. Uh, consider subscribing and clicking on that like button. It helps the channel a lot. And let's dive into the visual itself. So after opening a Power BI file and heading over to the Power BI visuals menu, you can search for calendar visuals. And today we're going to explore the Beyond Soft Calendar visual. Now, I already have it in my file, so I'm not going to add it again. But one thing that does strike me and which makes me very happy is that this again is a certified visual. That means that it will also show up in my online uh, reports as well as printouts that I have for uh, various purposes. There's two other certified uh, visuals that we can use, and there is a non-certified visual as well. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a follow-up video on the three other calendar visuals as well. So let's have a look at what we see when we click on the Beyond Soft calendar update. We have a nice dark uh, visual here, some color codes, and even some more information. What we're going to do is we're going to use two scenarios and we're going to use our own sample of data. Um, this has been a recent update to Microsoft, Microsoft Power BI in which we have the option to download a sample. This can be interesting if you are unfamiliar with the visual and you want to get a head start on using this visual. Feel free to add that sample data to your visualization. Uh, to your Power BI file, but I'm going to work with my own content. So let's click on close. And I have three pages available. First look, the Excel example and a project online example as well. What we're going to do first is I'm going to click on the BCI calendar visual. And I can grab that and make that a full screen visual and in the visualizations the build visual tab we see that there's three values that you can fill in two of them are mandatory for any data to show up successfully one is a date field makes sense to have a date field in a calendar visualization right so that might be self-explanatory not just any date will work though if you have a month visual or if you have a month value or a year value, that doesn't cut it. It needs to be a day by day value. Then you can use any type of measure to add data and visualize that on the calendar. There's also a tool tip to give additional value or additional information on the cells that you have selected. So let's um, grab the Excel example and let's add the date value. What we see happening is that the visualization changes a little bit. There's still no calendar in the screen, uh, but we do see that we have a date field. One of the things that struck me odd at first instance is that we have a warning message telling me that this visualization has been deprecated. Click to see details, gives you an, somewhat more information on what to expect. So I dug deeper and I found this page from the designer himself stating that, yes, you'll see these deprecated values, but it doesn't break any of your reports or dashboard. It simply adds the icon as a warning message that telling you that this visual is not being maintained. There is more information on this page and I would highly recommend you reading it yourself. I have a link in the show notes, so please refer to that and, and have a look at yourself. Bottom line, 
is that Manny is working on getting more time and updating this visual, getting back to our almost empty BCI calendar visual, we need to add one additional value here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a value for the people that are in the office. So this first example is the office space. How busy is it at a certain day in the office? Now what I highly recommend you do as well is adding a filter on this page where you select the year and the month value. That is because we have a month by month view for May, but there is no way to slice through the different months on the visual itself. So currently we're looking at May and we can look at June and July and the data looks good. However, it looks a bit small. So what we need to do is we need to upgrade our visual and we're going to do that by navigating to the format your visual options. In the newer versions of Power BI, you have two uh, different tabs. One is the general tab for any visual formatting and that contains the properties, the title, any effects that might be taken into, effect, uh, into account such as the background, visual header, border, uh, shadow. I like that one. I'm going to add that. That just breathes a little bit more. So any of the general uh, things you would expect more visuals uh, to have, you will find those in the um, you'll find those in the general tab. Specific situations or specific formatting based on a visual itself can be found in the visual um, uh, format format your visual visual tab. There's four sections. Uh, of course, there's the data labels, the data colors, week numbers, and calendar format. Now, for the calendar format, one thing that I always like to do is I'd like to change the week start date to Monday. Because I'm in the Netherlands, that is the way that we approach our weeks. Um, we also have border thickness, which we can increase so that it's, uh, it's more of a um, cell block. I would say we can add it like this, making that much more clear that we have different dates uh, to look at. We can change the color and the font size, um, font color. And we have a month alignment, which we can change. We have a week alignment and we have a day alignment as well. So for the week alignment, we might want to add the week numbers. Currently they're turn, turned off, but if we turn them on, we have them on the left side. Now this doesn't look very uh, good because it's so small, but I can increase the size and I can change the way that we look at uh, week numbers by adding the ISO week numbering instead of uh, the normal one that we currently have. If I turn that on, we can see that this is actually week 17, this is week 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So the placement we can even change, we can set it to the left or the right, or whatever uh, we would like to have. I'll keep it at left. So that's it for the week numbers. We can change the font width, we can change the font width, we can change the size, we can change the alignment. Um, let's dive into the details, right? The actual data that we want to add um, more content to. Currently and by default, it doesn't have a color gradient or a, a minimum and maximum color. What we can do, however, is we can add some color to our visual. We can even make that a little bit darker. And what we see is we see that these values are higher and this one is lower. 
this one is significantly lower but the values don't pop out uh, just yet so to do that is we need to go to the data labels themselves and increase the size of the data label now it's a bit more readable we can even change the color sch uh, schema to be white so that we can actually see the values a bit better and what I liked about the visual is that you can also color code the cells or the days that don't have any data in them there's a no data color option and I like to turn that a little bit light gray so we have that Saturday and Sunday no one will be in the office so that's perfectly fine and with that you have a nice visualization of your current month and we can even skip to June and we can see how busy the office is at that date uh, at that month and July and that's the end of my data set for this one so I have May June and July and we can see how that is formatting uh, nicely in a calendar view looking back at the visuals calendar format gives us a short option to have week number formatting we have changing the day that the week starts border thickness we've changed uh, the week numbers is very important I would say data colors is something that you can do a lot with uh, you can even have diverging values in which you have a third optional color and you see the granularity a little bit better we can also add a minimum a center and a maximum value for this data set I set the minimum value to zero and I believe I had 250 as a max value and for 500 as being the max so now you see that those colors change uh, for our um, report as well there's the option to have it as gradient so every color in between the values that we have set here would be taken into account however you can have also uh, the option to go for a fixed value and then it will only take these values and it will pick the closest value that you can see so if gradients doesn't give you a nice overview of your project or of your calendar uh, it might be an idea to have a fixed color type in the general tab you have your title and you have your option to add the title uh, change that to the middle maybe you want to have the text as white and the background as blue I always like to do that uh, giving that much more content to the actual title um, and there's effects there's header icons I normally turn those off uh, because that will bother people that are in the Power BI service looking at your report that don't want to see these values here alternative text for if the uh, image isn't showing up so that is what the visualization can do and I wanted to share the Excel example that I prepared which is somewhat like the one that I created uh, together with you it just shows you not the actual values the actual people in the office but it shows you a percentage and that percentage is the utilization which is a value that I created for it within the Excel sheet itself so in here we see that there is a utilization of just 8% and with the tooltip that we have as an option we can see that the people in the office are actually 38 people and here it's more or less 482 June looks a little bit different with the last day being the lowest value and July also looks very nice as you can see the visual has a lot of options to change how it showcases the values first look that we did together has a broader thicker line between the cells and other colors and other color fonts uh, font colors 
this one looks nice as well then for our last use case what i did is i took a real data set of a large project online environment and in that environment we have our key milestones these key milestones are part of a project and they report on those key milestones and when those milestones are happening so i think they will be ha happy that i'm going to create this report for them as well what i did for our example because i need to be because i can't use the actual client's data names i created fake project names and fake milestone names so the project online example what it does is and i have some supporting visuals here as well so again we have our year and we have our month value which is a slicer then we have the count of milestones by year and month that shows all the milestones for the year and as you might expect the most milestones will be in december closing of the year everyone wants to finish that project then in this section i'll showcase the fake project name the milestone name and the finish date in which that milestone actually happens what we can do is we can select a single value and in it we'll see that the blue skies project has a lot of deliverables and in the real action life situation this might be a project that has a couple of things running for them and finishing up in that day. I can also select this project or this date and it will give us some different values. I can also select it again so that everything, everything is selected and go to another date such as March. And in March, I might want to know how many, uh, which projects actually have something to do uh, on the last day of March. And in it, we see that there's multiple projects having their building completed. A really nice way to visualize what is going to happen in which month. So currently we are in May and I want to know what projects have anything to do with May. And what we see is if we don't select any of those project, uh, those cells, we see the whole list of projects that have deliverables. And we can select single values to see what milestone is actually going to be completed. As you can imagine, there's a lot of use cases that I can think of when uh, looking at the Beyond Soft calendar visual. And there's even more calendar visuals that we can explore. So make sure to subscribe to get more videos like this one. And maybe you'd like to see some of the other visual exploration videos that I've done recently. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like this video and giving it a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot and I hope to see you next time.